the turtle cast. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Alex? How are you? Jason, that's a really nice voice. <laughs> yes, yeah, thank you. I was trying to think. I was going to do like, turtle. I was thinking to myself, I was like, how fast can I say turtle? I think you need to make it dot .io. Is there going to be a turtle.io? If you got to buy it now. I got to buy it right now before really safe. I just cost you money. Shame on you. You idiot. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Every time you speak, it costs money. I know. Shut the hell up, Jason. You don't know what you're talking about <laughs> oh that's funny <laughs> oh, those boy. guys looked really bored yeah. <laughs> oh. no one knows marketing jason <laughs> we're worried about saving the world <laughs> not about your content we don't care about your content <laughs> yes so uh i want to understand turtle yeah um and i want it to under what I mean, what understand like what like way? like okay, what, wh- why should I even sign up? Okay, like I I know you're wanting me to do it because you own the company. Yeah, and and so you're obviously going to be making money off of my data, but I mean, why should I sign up in the first place? Okay, well, um, so it's I guess it's going to break down into two categories. Um, one is my own selfish reasons, and I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about you as a user. Right. So what are the selfish reasons? And if I don't have any selfish reasons. What kind of altruistic reasons should I have? Like ones where I can help others, right? right? You know, kind of like a service to other model. And when we do that, we look at it in the framework of, okay, there's a tool here. What is this tool? Why should I trust the tool? Why am I going to sign up? Okay. I don't trust these guys. I don't know who they are. But Ben Ben does this to me. So I'm going to put my information there. This doesn't matter. I'm going to get it. So let's make it really easy to start. Society. Sign up, assholes. Yeah. <laughs> Sign up. Just just do it. I don't want to have to explain don't it. Don't question. Don't you know? <laughs> you remember? The, hold on. You sidetrack. You know the, just do it. Who's the guy um, who's in Transformers? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> Make your dreams. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Sign up for yes, Turtle. Yes, if you sign up for Turtle, your whole life will change. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's just create a very simple base here, and then we'll get into both of our frames, selfish and non-selfish. Information. Right. You and I sitting in this room, we intake information constantly. Okay. Us intaking and analyzing things in our just our regular world allows us to survive just from a strictly survival right. standpoint. And because we're not just primitive apes, you know, we well, think... Well, some of us. <laughs> you're a little higher <laughs> being than I am. But. We, um, we can have conversations with right. one another. So we share information right. through social context. And it allows us to interact and have functions of society so information is the basis for us our survival in our interaction on how we make choices this is not a plug for turtle and monster (laughs) no (laughs) they will buy your data eventually they and they probably Uh, does coca-cola own monster i bet somebody some big conglomerate that or pepsi might own yeah probably something so if information is the basis for everything we do well how does that tie into turtle with data well data is but information right on a computer okay and that touches the internet right so if we're looking at this simply the system is saying okay you're going to interact in your daily life with this information that's extremely important for your survival and your social interaction right what we do well on turtle that data the recorded aspect of everything electronically that information that is valuable right. for our survival right. and our interactions <laughs> in society. No, that makes sense. So Tartle's kind of like if you go to a restaurant, the waiter or the waitress. Yeah. It's it's going back and forth between the kitchen and grabbing the food, bringing it to you, and then at the end, you pay for the food um, and you give a tip. That's correct. It's, yeah. it's facilitating an interaction. Right. On behalf of two unknown people. It doesn't, it, it's like a waiter or waitress in that it's serving. Yeah. But it's, it's not like ultimate power. No, it's strictly there to serve the social purpose of someone right. going out to eat. Right. Okay. And that plate of food you're receiving is information or data. Right. And what the chef is creating in the kitchen 
you, the person creating the data or a business is like, huh, I can send out all these different types of data, my menu of so data. So like Facebook would be the chef and then they've created a place where they can grab data. Yeah. Because they're wanting, as you're doing things, signing up for things, looking at websites, you know, all these different things. And then Tardo comes in and says, no, we're, we're going to serve you that data. Yeah. And then we're also going to give it to you. But then at the same time, we're providing a service. It's you're a service. actually eating a meal. Because if you didn't have the waiter or waitress, you'd have to go back to the kitchen and try to get it yourself. Right. So Which the angry chef is going to yell at you. Yeah. And you like Facebook. You don't want Gordon <laughs> Ramsay back there screaming at you for the data. Right, right. right? So we'll facilitate all the chaos in between and exchange between unknown parties. Right. Just so that we can share information from consumer to consumer, business to consumer, consumer to business or business to business. And sharing that, that interaction, that marketplace interaction is information is the basis of survival and social interaction. And when you sign up, then you are getting paid for your data in Bitcoin. That is correct. So so you can sell packets like your health packet, These data packets. social media packet or whatever that you've already collected. It's the data you've already gone online. Right. And then you get money for it. Yeah. So if I'm looking at the menu of things, I'm right. a chef, right? And I'm like, here's my list of menu items, data, these data packets. Here's the beef category right? or the appetizers. Here's my appetizers of right. data. That's got a price. Does someone want to buy it off the menu? Sure. Here you go. Give it to the waiter. It's going to work its way out right, out of the right, kitchen, right. push the door open, <laughs> all chaos, right? right? And it's going to slam it on the table and say, enjoy your meal. This is what you purchased, right? Nachos. And then you're going to go for your main course. Oh, right. what's on the main course? Oh, healthcare information. Right. I like that main course. That's meaty. Right. And then you're going to be like, I'll take that dish and I'm going to pay top dollar for it. Right. Because I know it's coming from a quality source. Right. Farm to table, data to the table. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> you know, okay. No, I, no, I, I just kind of wanted to use that so that, you know, people understand this isn't like we're just taking your data, turning around and um, selling it to big companies. No. It's actually, we're, we're standing for humanity and for every single person that's on a computer. Correct. With we're, the we, rights we, of those people. Yes. The rights of those people. We're not looking at it as, oh, we're, we're you know, we're, we're wanting to help this social media company or we're wanting yeah. to help this search engine company or whatever it may be. We're actually looking at the user, which is the person on the internet first. Right. Yes. And saying, how can we protect them? They're the, we're the, they're the people we want to champion. And they're creating information, data. Yes. By what websites they go to. What websites they go to. How many times they go to the hospital. What they purchase day in and day out at the right. store. Um, how they feel about certain what things. What they invest in if they buy stocks on that an app. That is all information. Right. And information drives decisions on survival and societal interaction. So Tartle is a tool right. or a waiter to help facilitate an interaction of information. And that information is data. Right. But but what I want people to understand is there's no, because um, I know you, you know, very, very well. There's no nefarious thing going on. There's no. no Tartle is wanting to serve. It's only Humanity. wanting to serve. Right. It's it's so, you know, unbiased on the serving. It gives everybody the choice on both sides. It gives you the option. We do right. not determine what you're going to do with the things you labor to create. You're not going to go in the kitchen and tell the chef this is what he needs to make. Right. No, you're the chef. You're going to choose the menu of items. Right. And you're going to send them out of the kitchen when you feel they're ready, no, hot, that's ready perfect. to go. So if somebody um, wants to sign up for Tartle, because I want to get how they can sign up for it, and then I want to get into somebody that ran for president. Yeah. So, okay, when they go to sign up, and again, you have two reasons. You can do it for your selfish reasons, which is fine. To get Bitcoin. It's like, I want to... I want currency. I want payment for things that I put time and labor into. Right. You go to work to get paid. Great. If you're creating information, which is the basis for everything that happens Online, in society, right. you should get paid for it. Right. You created it. Right. You put the time and labor and you're the Michelangelo of all the data. Right. All right. And then if you don't have selfish reasons where you're like, well, you know, I'm in a comfortable spot. I don't want extra money. Great. Good for you. Let's think about helping share that information so that people can make better decisions and maybe sharing your healthcare information can, you know, lead to a cure to some disease. Right. Or help understand what's going on with diabetes on a wide, widespread scale, right? 
or help with the, you know, sharing your location to track the spread of diseases. Right. Do it for an altruistic reason. Right. Because signing up doesn't hurt you. It only benefits yourself with, with a company and society. That's trusted to use your data in a responsible way. Yeah. And you know why we're so responsible? Because we're going to educate you on it. Right. And we're transparent with everything, how it works, its design, and mm. where that data goes. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So to sign up, right. you go to tartle.co, not IO, <laughs> but I will buy that. Okay. So tartle.co, T A R T L E.co. And there's a big button on there that says join now. And when you click on it, you just create your account in under 30 seconds and you're in the system. Mm, that's perfect. All right. And then um, I know you wanted to talk about Andrew Yang. Yeah. So um, very smart guy. Smart dude. He's, he's doing got something. a podcast now. Yep. And he's doing something interesting. So like the Electronic Frontier Foundation, they're a nonprofit uh, legal group that advocates for digital human rights. Right. So Andrew Yang found in his campaign, well, if we're looking at what people find value in, the, the people that he wants to get the vote for, they're, you know, a millennial generation, gen whatever. I don't pay attention to that. I think we're on the last one, Z. <laughs> That's it. Humanity's done. <laughs> Humanity's done. So um, at that point, he was like, oh, you know, this is the group. They're creating a lot of information data online. How can I advocate for this group? Because all of these major companies, corporate America, the man, right, is, you know, taking all the profits and they're not dispersing it evenly in some no, socialistic format, right? They don't have to. It's the, you know, it's, it's just they've what created that they've created it. And we voluntarily go on that website right. and give them our data. And we don't look at the terms and conditions and all that other nonsense. And, but we pass the blame. So he's like, okay, how about everyone signs up for my data revolution? And this data dividend project is saying, if I collect a big enough list, I'll go to the policymakers of the United States and advocate for your rights so that there's a tax on these companies to then pay you. Well, let's consider some of the limiting factors here. Great idea. I love the data dividend thing where people should be paid for their information. Absolutely. I, I don't like the word tax or government involved. <laughs> right. And that just doesn't really, it doesn't add up and it already creates a sense of animosity. Right. It already puts up a wall to those people that are like, what are you, you going to attack us now from a legal framework? So what we're saying is, um, it's fantastic you have a list, Andrew Yang. Now, why don't you take those people on your list and guide them over to a tool that is completely egalitarian, right? A tool that's designed for choice for not only for the people that are big technology companies, but the individual itself. So both parties can benefit in an interaction where they both have choice and decision over it rather than just say, I'm going to put it into law. And now you don't have any choice. I've never understood why the government, maybe you can respond to this. I get his idea and in, in, in the theory and, and I understand that what he's trying to do to protect. And we always get into the government trying to do this protection. You know, when, when we look at more of um, consciousness and then we look at, you know, conscious capitalism. Yeah. That's where I think the reward needs to be at. If you're a company and you've proven that you can have the ability to be able to protect, you know, the user. Yeah. Then that should be rewarded. But it should still be capitalistic and allowing that competitive nature yeah, and to the, run course. And it's interesting, the competitive nature of that landscape is changing where you can't just be competitive zero sum. Right. It's competitive, but also how do I take care of every single stakeholder involved? The planet, the people, the suppliers, right? All these other things that go in between. Where now, now with Andrew Yang's, we would be dependent on whatever government is in place at that time. Yeah, and then so that means... I got to hand over my sovereignty over to the government to then advocate for me rather than, wait a minute, there's a tool right here where I can advocate for myself immediately right. and demand immediate payment for something that I create rather than wait the long legal process of going through and trying to change policy. Right. When it's a, when it's a combative approach. Well, and thinking long-term too, Andrew Yang may be a great guy, very honest, but yeah. 20 years from what, what, what are we relying that on, you know, to the next generation? Yeah. And then that means anytime you ever want to increase the value of how much you're getting paid, you have to then go through a long process mm. of lobbying and then going to the government and be like, we want to change this policy where you can go on turtle and say, that's not the price I want for this menu item. Right. 
I'm going to sell it for this much. Right. So now you feel like you're getting compensated exactly what you are worth rather than saying, here's the aggregate total of all of us. And I'm just going to receive a portion of this tax. Wait a minute. I put in a lot more work into this than the other chef. Right. Gordon Ramsay's got phenomenal kitchens because he's passionate about it. But some of the people don't put much work into it. Right. You know, so it's a tool that is, you know, egalitarian and it helps with that choice and it gives people that power and it can be done instantly. Well, it's also what is the world is coming to is, uh, you know, a decentralization. It is. It's decentralized. So, yeah. yeah. And, and that's the beautiful part about it. Anything that's decentralized is or open source yeah. is amazing. And here's an interesting concept. I'm glad you brought that up. The data dividend project is a centralized project. And you're trying to take data, which is decentralized and people themselves are decentralized right. and applied into a centralized system. It doesn't work. It's completely contradictory. And, and so what would be that centralized filter that, that would be the wrong filter that you're seeing that he's pushing? You know how it would, that stream would go through and then there's going to be a filter that it has to yeah, go through. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying it's wrong. Right. I'm just saying it's not efficient and does not bode for the most amount of choice for the individual. And it long term doesn't look like it would have the longevity that something else would have because his filter is a political filter. Right. It's not a filter of um, here's human rights. Here's what we put time and labor into. It's more of here's the policy. Here's my, you know, marketing campaign right now. And here are obvious key people in the tech world that I can isolate and point a finger at and say they're the bad guy. And a turtle, no one's the bad guy. Right. Okay. We're saying people have operated in a certain way. Now we're going to create a different option. Mm. And the more people that come on it will force those people that were going a certain way to come in and purchase the information from you rather than abuse it in some black box nature. So like black box nature, you know, we can look at it and say it sounds good, but I mean, this is extreme, Yeah. but it, it would be great for the planet if we only had 800,000 people. So can we can we kill <laughs> yeah. eight billion people? You're, you're exactly right. You see it's, what I'm it's saying? On, it's honestly it's like immediately cutting off the arm. Yes. Right. Yeah. And it's we've all known and we've seen through history that that doesn't work very well. Right. So his ambitions are fantastic. Oh yeah. The data dividend um, project is a good way if, towards a humanitarian aspect of giving people what they deserve. But what we're saying is, I'm glad everyone paid attention to this list and his project and him pushing towards policy. Why don't we just go around the policy and go directly to something, a tool that is available to champion you right now? Yeah, no, he, he's got some amazing creative ideas. I think that's why he got and creativity shoot out real quick. <laughs> listen, creativity is what moves us forward in society. Right. Creativity with information. And so, you know, if he really understands data and information, he would realize that all the data of the past is it should tell you not right. to continue to go from a legislative standpoint. And um, on Tartar.co, you would love to have him. Listen, and, and you could, you guys could go back and forth on data. I think that'd I be would awesome. love to chat with him about it. And again, it wouldn't be combative. I've just, it's like, there's two different aspects. He's chosen right. a political life and I've chosen one that can immediately affect everyone across the globe. No, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want us to think that we're bashing him at all. No, I think no, no. Both By like no him. means. I love that someone is actually going in this direction. Anything in this direction is yes. fantastic. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But on that's all I wanted to talk about. And I thank you for asking in a simple format, how we can define what Tartle is and what it does and why you should sign up. No, I love it. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Jason.